In Cuban Revolution, Che Guevara's role as commander. As second in command, Guevara was a harsh disciplinarian who sometimes shot defectors. Deserters were punished as traitors, and Guevara was known to send squads to track those seeking to abandon their duties. As a result, Guevara became feared for his brutality and ruthlessness. During the guerrilla campaign, Guevara was also responsible for the summary executions of a number of men accused of being informers, deserters, or spies. In his diaries, Guevara described the first such execution, of Euthymio Guerra, a peasant who had acted as a guide for the Castrus guerrillas, but admitted treason when it was discovered he accepted the promise of 10,000 pesos for repeatedly giving away the rebels' position for attack by the Cuban Air Force. Such information also allowed Batista's army to burn the homes of peasants sympathetic to the revolution. Upon Guerra's request that they end his life quickly, Che stepped forward and shot him in the head, writing, The situation was uncomfortable for the people and for Euthymio so I ended the problem giving him a shot with a .32 pistol in the right side of the brain, with exit orifice in the right temporal lobe. His scientific notations and matter-of-fact description suggested to one biographer a remarkable detachment to violence by that point in the war. Later, Guevara published a literary account of the incident, titled, Death of a Traitor, where he transfigured Euthymio's betrayal and pre-execution request that the revolution, take care of his children, into a, revolutionary parable about redemption through sacrifice. Che smoking a pipe at his guerrilla base in the Escambre Mountains. Although he maintained a demanding and harsh disposition, Guevara also viewed his role of commander as one of a teacher, entertaining his men during breaks between engagements with readings from the likes of Robert Louis Stevenson, Miguel de Cervantes, and Spanish lyric poets. Together with this role, and inspired by José Martí's principle of, literacy without borders, Guevara further ensured that his rebel fighters made daily time to teach the uneducated campesinos with whom they lived and fought to read and write, in what Guevara termed the, battle against ignorance. Thomas Alba, who fought under Guevara's command, later stated that, Che was loved, in spite of being stern and demanding. We would, have, given our life for him. His commanding officer, Fidel Castro, described Guevara as intelligent, daring, and an exemplary leader who, had great moral authority over his troops. Castro further remarked that Guevara took too many risks, even having a, tendency toward foolhardiness. Guevara's teenage lieutenant, Joel Iglesias, recounts such actions in his diary, noting that Guevara's behavior in combat even brought admiration from the enemy. On one occasion Iglesias recounts the time he had been wounded in battle, stating, Che ran out to me, defying the bullets, threw me over his shoulder, and got me out of there. The guards didn't dare fire at him, later they told me he made a great impression on them when they saw him run out with his pistol stuck in his belt, ignoring the danger, they didn't dare shoot. Guevara was instrumental in creating the clandestine radio station Radio Rebelde, Rebel Radio, in February 1958, which broadcast news to the Cuban people with statements by the 26th of July movement, and provided radio telephone communication between the growing number of rebel columns across the island. Guevara had apparently been inspired to create the station by observing the effectiveness of CIA-supplied radio in Guatemala in ousting the government of Jacobo Arbenz Guzman. To quell the rebellion, Cuban government troops began executing rebel prisoners on the spot, and regularly rounded up, tortured, and shot civilians as a tactic of intimidation. By March 1958, the continued atrocities carried out by Batista's forces led the United States to stop selling arms to the Cuban government. Then in late July 1958, Guevara played a critical role in the Battle of Las Mercedes by using his column to halt a force of 1,500 men called up by Batista's General Cantio in a plan to encircle and destroy Castro's forces. Years later, Major Larry Bachman of the United States Marine Corps analyzed and described Che's tactical appreciation of this battle as, brilliant. During this time Guevara also became an, expert, at leading hit-and-run tactics against Batista's army, and then fading back into the countryside before the army could counterattack.